A Quiet Rune Scribe Written by Blue Dragon 64 Chapter 2 After waking up and washing, I grabbed the bag with my things and headed toward the head mayor's office and knocked on the door. Come in. As I entered the office, I see Magree, the mayor who brought me into the orphanage years ago. Morning, Shane. You ready to go? I nod. Yes, ma'am. She nods back. After a few moments, she gathers her things and we leave the orphanage. As we walk through Canterlot, we pass through the shopping district and move towards the older part of the city as the buildings get taller and more fancy. We come to the entrance of the library. We stop. Here. She hands me a packet with my documents. You've been a good cult these years, and you've grown so much. She tells me, looking me up and down some. Now you behave, okay? I don't want to hear about you starting trouble now. I give a small smile to her. Of course, ma'am. And thank you for taking care of me all these years. She gives me her own smile before giving me a nod, and passing me a small piece of paper with some numbers on it. This is the orphanage's address for any mail you want to send. And make sure to tell me if you need help. The last part is mixed with some sternness in her voice. I will. I promise. And thank you again. I say as I put the slip of paper in my bag. Goodbye. And with that, she nods and starts walking towards the orphanage. I turn back to the city library. The building is much larger than the others around it. Its style is very similar to the old Roman buildings, with large stone pillars and bricks, and a large front entrance with a fair few ponies coming in and out. As I make my way inside, I approach the front desk. An elderly unicorn mare is sitting there checking some pony's books and putting them in a bag. I wait a few minutes for them to finish before approaching the desk. What can I do for you, sir? She asks. I'm here for the apprenticeship. It should be under the name Shade Evergreen. She looks a bit surprised. Oh, so you're the new cult joining. It's good to see some young ponies interested in learning. She says in a happy tone. Do you see the door over there? She points with a hoof to the door on the wall on the left, in between some bookshelves. Go through there and take your first right, and then it should be your first door on your left. Thanks. After a few moments, I'm at the door. I reach out and knock. Come in, it's open. As I open the door, I see a light green unicorn mare with a blue mane. Oh, so you're the new apprentice. I nod as I enter the office. Yes, I'm Shade Evergreen. Nice to meet you. She nods to a sitting pillow on the floor. I'm Daisy Scrolls. Nice to meet you too. As I sit, she brings out some forms. So, you will need to sign this. It'll make you a government employee, and this one is for your room. As I look at the papers, nothing really noteworthy stands out. Mostly just a simple document for taxes. I was surprised this was a government job, to be honest. I would have thought it would be under the city's control. I ask as I read through the pages. Daisy chuckles at that. <laughs> I thought the same when I took the job, but apparently the princess likes to keep the library well kept. Most of our funding even comes from her. I boss at that. Huh. I never would have guessed that. After a few moments, I finish reading and sign my name on both documents. Getting a surprised look from her as I didn't use my hooves, but my TK field. Huh. Well, that's a neat trick. I smile. Yeah, I think so too. As I finish signing, I pass the papers back and she looks over them before nodding. Well, everything looks good. She puts the papers on her desk. Follow me. I'll give you a tour of where you're going to work. We leave her office. After showing me the library's layout, she brought me to the break room. The room has a few long tables with some cushions to sit on. This is our break room. You can eat or just relax in your break. Food is served in three meals, so you can get breakfast at six, lunch is at two, and dinner is at seven. After we move into a wide hallway full of a few dozen doors as we walk down it, we stop at a door numbered 56. She hands me a key. This is your room, Key. Don't lose it or you'll be fine for it. Thanks. 
As I unlock the door and enter the room, it's larger than I expected. Around 15 by 25 feet. The left wall has a bed, desk, and dresser in it, and the front wall has a decent-sized window. The right, a small kitchen, a countertop, and an oven along with another door leading to a bathroom with a shower and toilet. A lot more space than I thought. Daisy nods. I have your schedule here. She passes it, and I look at it. I have work tomorrow at 7. Thanks again. She smiles. No problem. Don't forget breakfast is at 6. And have a good night, Shade. I nod. You too, Daisy. After she leaves, I close and lock my door before unpacking my things. Mostly drawing supplies on the desk. And now that I think about it, I don't know much, do I? Well, I could buy some stuff when I get paid. It's not too late, so I decided to drop my bags and go read in the library. After locking my door again, I made my way into the main library. As I wander the bookshelves, I see many sections before finding the one I was looking for. Runic Magic. Only a dozen or so bookshelves for this subject. And being in the out-of-the-way part of the library. I decided to try and find a book for the basics of the craft, hoping to find one that let me improve on my basics. I didn't want to blow myself up, so best to start small. And after some time, I found a book that looked good. It's mostly about different kinds of basic runic spells. And after a bit more time searching, I found another book about forming a runic matrix. Most of the books seem more advanced than these, so I take them out to the front desk and check them out before heading back to my room and getting comfortable. And after some reading and practice, I go eat the food that's being served. The food itself is nothing really special, mostly some raw and cooked vegetables, fruit and some hay fries. After saying hello to Daisy, I head back to my room and read some more before showering and heading to bed. And I don't want to be late for my first day of work. After waking up, I take a shower after drying off. I go grab one of the books that I got yesterday, and when after reading it some, I found out my earlier presumption about a matrix only having math was wrong. Although, in hindsight, it makes sense, as despite the ponies of this world having more knowledge than you'd think, they are still less advanced than humans. The main thing I missed in the first runic book I read was the term symbols. I thought this meant things like plus or minus or other math symbols, and they do, but they also have symbols for other things. A good example is light. If I wanted to show light in the matrix, I would have to use something like the speed of light or its wavelength so the spell would have a starting point to work off of. But as far as I can tell, the beings of Equus don't know the speed of light or about light wavelengths. So how do they use something like a basic light spell? Well, they use a symbol to represent light instead as a substitute. This is why there are different names for a spell matrix. There is a period number matrix for the ones with only math, which are the most powerful, but also the most complex. The second type is a mixed matrix, having both numbers and symbols being somewhat less stable and weaker, and also taking more magic to use. And finally, there's a pure symbol matrix, being the weakest and least stable, taking the most magic to create the same effect. Although most ponies outside the researchers, or spell scribes, don't really use these terms as it's mostly for some pony doing spell creation. Speaking of spell creation, I found some text about it in the small library at the orphanage. Mostly in warnings about its dangers, because you can get hurt when a spell becomes unstable. This danger and the difficulty most ponies seem to be having with it, with more complex math, makes spell creation an uncommon career to attain as higher education is needed. This is one of the main reasons that even in an empire as big as Equestria, there are only a few real magic schools. Most ponies just don't have the talent or drive to try. And even then, most only modify a pre-existing spell. Only a few truly new spells being made every few years. Most being released by the crown. Some being made by Celestia herself every so often. For my own mental sake, I decided to abbreviate the Matrix names to PNM, and MM, and finally PSM. To keep better track of them, as an example, my first spell would be a PNM, as it's only numbers. Another thing is the symbols themselves, most being words of ancient languages, although I don't know why they would use an older language rather than a new one. 
After learning all this, I decided to find a book on the runic languages later today. Although, I realize many of these runes are unnecessary for me, as a lot of them are for concepts and things. I already know enough about to use that anyway. A good example of this is the light spell I practiced last night. I tried to change it by using a specific wavelength instead of the symbol they used, and after some minor tweaks, I got it to work. The spell being more stable and giving off more light, even using around a quarterless magic to maintain the spell. But after learning about some of the dangers of modifying a spell, I decided to only try on a weak spell until I get more experience with the craft. The page I'm reading right now is one of those. Basic spells being one to create a small flame, only about the size of a candle flame. But the spell is one of the more complex beginner spells. As I start to draw out my rune matrix, I'm interrupted by a few knocks on my door. I pause my drawing to pick up my key from my desk with my TK field and move it across the room to unlock my door. And after a moment, I get the door unlocked and bring my key back to me. It's open. Come in. I give a light shout. As the door is pushed open, I see Daisy coming through the doorway. Morning, Shade. Sleep well? She greets me as she enters my room. Yes. You? I ask back and she nods. Yeah. So you ready to go? I nod. Yeah. Do I need to bring anything? Just your key. After grabbing my key, we leave my room. As we walk down to the hall, she asks me something. So, what are you reading? Some books on runic magic. Why? She gives a bit of a surprised look. You practice runic magic? Wow, I've never met a non-unicorn that uses it. I turn to her. Really? I would have thought there would at least be a few that you've met. Nope. Most ponies that aren't studying it never even learn much about it. I myself know some, but not much. As we enter the break room, we pause our conversation to get food before sitting down and continuing. Who taught you how to do it? Before I could answer, we were interrupted. Well, to do well. We turned to see an older-looking Pegasus stallion. The stallion looked to be on the older side, some of his mane graying and a few wrinkles under his orange eyes. His goat being almost the same color of orange and his red mane still visible, even with its graying. Oh, hey Blaze, have a good sleep? Just fine. So, this is the new pony working with us. I nod to him. Yep, nice to meet you. Name's Shade. I greet him. Sam, it's good to see some young colts still care about knowledge. Ah, but where are my manners? I'm Blazing Flame. But most just call me Blaze. Nice to meet you. He says as he sits down at the table with us. Back to my first question. What do you do what? Before I can answer his question, Daisy does so for me. We were talking about runic magic. Apparently Shade here practices it. Blaze looked at me sharing the same look of surprise Daisy gave me earlier. Huh. Well, now that's surprising. Who taught you if you don't mind me asking? Daisy pipes up. That's what I was asking. Well, no one taught me. I found a book about it and decided to try to learn it. Both looked even more surprised, now Blaze being the first to speak. Do you know any spells? He asks. I look around for a good example and I spot Blaze's tea. Is your tea cold? I ask. He looks at his tea before taking a sip. Mm. Yup. I grab his cup from his hoof with my field and start to draw a runic matrix. Over the past two years, I've only had two spells of practice, the heating spell and the floating spell, so I've gotten fast at drawing both. After around 30 seconds, I finish and start powering the matrix, and after a few moments, I stop, letting the spell disappear before getting Blaze his now hot cup of tea. Here you go. Both look shocked at my display. What was that? Daisy asks. I give a light smirk. The healing spell. She looks back at me. I know what spell it was, but how did you cast it so fast? Well, I don't have to picture it in my mind. Only draw the runes and feed it magic. So, as long as I'm fast and don't mess up on the runes, it doesn't take that long. Still, Colt, she's right. 
I've met a lot of unicorns that take longer to cast that spell. How long have you been using it? Blaze asks me. Well, it's the first one I learned, so a little over two years now. How many spells do you know? Daisy asks. Well, I know heating and a float from the first book I had on runic magic. Magic light and candle flame I found books for yesterday, so I'm still learning them. <laughs> well, you've got me beat when I was your age. I only learned one. Daisy says while finishing her meal. We should get moving. You ready? I had finished my own a while ago, so I nodded. See you, Blaze. You too. Daisy, same with you. Shade, hope you like work in here. Me too, Blaze. Tell me what you guys think of Blaze's or Blaz. I can't really tell. I feel like Blaz doesn't really match the correct naming scheme, so I just kind of made it Blaze. Tell me how you guys feel about that, but also how you feel about a wee bit of accent for him. I really wanted to introduce some, a little bit of variety in the voices, so it's just not my narrating voice, my young cult voice, my typical female voice, and then also my my gruffer male voice. Yeah, I don't know. I just wanted a little bit of variety in the voices because these feel like they're going to be the main characters, at least from what I've read so far. However, who are the main characters of my channel are my wonderful Patreons. Thank you, my tier ones. Balance Kindness, Chase the Master, Dreamless Portal, Hyperlink, Jason, HK4, AK Texture, Lord High, Night and Game, Make Cameo, Pony Boy Entertainment, Starlight Blades, Rain Flicker, and Tyler Perry. My tier twos, Captain Blue Shadow, Kiaktimus, The Animated Ghost, DJ Max 2000, Element the Wolf, H1 Wolf King, Potato 20, Mr. Crazy Deacon, Solar Comet, 212th Trooper, Mackenzie McCullers, Nocturne, Papa Lennon, Redeemer of Dark Souls, Eclipse, Sword Brother, Mordred, Artie Bryant, Rihanna, Dragon Wolf, and Steel Spark. A large thank you to my previous Titan tiers, Dark Guardian, Danish Dash, Maverick, and User1842. A big thank you to my current ones, Bis Eclipse, and Silent Titan. I appreciate you guys' support so freaking much, and it means a ton to me. That aside, however, this has been Fire Hearth. Have a wonderful day.